Hans Lippershey and his son Zacharias Hansen created the first microscope in the late 1590s. However, it wasn't until 1665 before the first study using a microscope was published. There have been many attempts to improve the design of the optical microscope to upgrade its resolution. But the optical microscope still remains fairly simple in design and is used everywhere from classrooms to chemistry labs. There are two features in a microscope we need to consider, the resolution and magnification. The light microscope magnification is a measure of how much a microscope can magnify an object. Light microscope usually has 40 to 100 times magnification power. The resolution power of a light microscope is the ability to distinguish between two points in a specimen. This depends on the numerical aperture of the objective lens and the wavelength of light passing through. In optical microscopy, GFP and its spectral variants are used for high-resolution visualisation of protein localization patterns in living organisms. When GFP label samples are viewed, optical sectioning, which is essential for the elimination of out-focused light, is obtainable through LSM, either by detection through a pinhole using confocal laser scanning microscopy or using multi-photon microscopy to exploit non-linear properties of fluorophore. However, LSM suffers from two major limitations, limited penetration depth and differences between the lateral and axial resolution. Selective plane illumination microscopy is a microscopic technique that creates optically sectioned images of a specimen by illuminating a section of a gene or protein with a sheet of laser light. Cylindrical optics are used to focus these beams of light onto one direction, therefore creating a plane of light. The sample is mounted in a transparent, low-concentration agarose gel, example PBS, and by using the four available degrees of freedom, three translational, one rotational, as shown in the diagram, the sample can be positioned such that the excitation light illuminates the plane of interest. We then use the objective lens, filter wheels and tube lens to image the distribution of fluorophores in the illumination plane onto a CCD camera. In addition to translating the sample through the light sheet, SVIM offers an optional recording scheme. You do this by recording many 3D stacks at different orientations of the sample. These data sets are then combined in a process called multi-view reconstruction. This process consists of three steps, namely pre-processing, registration, finally fusion where these pre-processed and registered views are fused into a single optimal image. Depending on the optical properties of the sample, multi-view reconstruction can help to fill in information about obscured regions of the sample and improve the resolution. For example, in this giant Huskin paper, where they were doing a live image of an opaque sample, Drosophila embryo in the heart of a live Nadaka, additional views provided information about regions of the sample that are not visible in the single view. Multi-view reconstruction was not necessary here despite the optically dense structure of the Drosophila embryo, the optical sectioning capability and the good lateral resolution of SVIM were enough to produce an image. For this figure, the images were orientated so that the illumination occurs from below. This results in a slight drop in intensity and clarity from the bottom to the top of each slice. Nevertheless, the information content across the embryo is nearly uniform, and we can clearly see the development of the embryo. However, in the imaging of the live medaka, as shown here, a stack is recorded for each orientation the medaka embryo is in, at 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and 270 degrees. The stacks were then reorientated in the computer to align them with the stack recorded at 0 degrees. The red circled arrowhead show the well-resolved part, and you see that they are close to the detection lens and facing the illumination plane. The fusion of these four data stacks yields a superior representation featuring similar clarity and resolution throughout the entire specimen at E and J. The image combination procedure inherently favours well-resolved and bright over poorly resolved and less well-visible features. In this other paper by Jan Huskin where they were doing a live image of a transparent sample, we can see that the single data set which is the top image suffer from poor resolution. Therefore, rotation of the sample and acquisition of multiple data sets with different overlap will provide overlapping data that multi-view reconstruction can combine to create isotropic resolution.